What's up, everybody? It's your boy Billy Mac back for another Boys Only podcast. Turn myself down. Excuse the haircut. Um, hopefully tomorrow, or at least later on this week. Hopefully, if not, definitely by next week. Cause can't take no more. All right. So please forgive me for not looking presentable. Got to turn my phones down uh, and all that good stuff. All right. Should have did that before I started the video, shouldn't I? But anyway, another boys podcast. Um, so let's let's talk about free agency. Let's let's third week of free agency. Uh, let's see here. Third week of free agency. All oh, we've literally signed two outside people. James Washington and Dante Fowler Jr. Um, I mean, Dante Fowler loves Dan Quinn, and James Washington is a a cowboy. Like he's really a cowboy. He owns a ranch in Texas, and he ropes and he cattles and he does the real thing. Um. Dante Fowler, it doesn't seem like he's going to be the type. If if you're looking for somebody who's going to be a starter, I don't think that's Dante Fowler. He's going to be a serviceable back, serviceable backup. Um, Dan Quinn, the good thing is Dan Quinn knows the player, so maybe he'll see something within the player and, and have something to uh, – you know, kind of fall back on if he if it doesn't seem like he's going to be um, great at what he's doing. Um, he is more of a speed rusher. And but if you're looking, like I said, if you're looking for somebody like I don't, I don't even know to me, him and Dorrance Armstrong are like neck and neck on the death chart. I think Dorrance might be a better run defender, but I haven't seen Dante Fowler play. But he's a Dan Quinn disciple, so we shall see. Um, James Washington. Now, I remember the name, and I remember him playing for Pittsburgh. I thought he was a decent player. But from what I have been reading, he is more – of a deep threat and he doesn't really have a mid to short range game, which brings me to a uh, theory that I have, if you will. If y'all have noticed, if y'all have noticed, um, how can I put it? If y'all have noticed, look at look at the Cowboys and their and the way their receivers are. Amari Cooper was more of a underneath the mid range type type of receiver. Ceedee Lamb was more of a mid range. Ceedee Lamb was more just mostly mid range. From just by memory, I, I he might have did some deep routes. He might. It seems like when he did deep routes, that's when Dak was throwing interceptions, or they were, you know, miscommunicating with each other. Um, and of course, well, he and CD Lamb did stuff behind the line of scrimmage, a lot of screens and jet sweeps kind of thing, and Michael Gallup. Never really did mid-range stuff, but he was a deep threat and he would do a slant. He would do a lot of underneath uh, type of um, routes. Now that Michael Gallup is more of the number one receiver, it makes me wonder. Really, CeeDee Lamb should be the number one receiver because, one, he's the youngest Two, he's supposedly the most dynamic of our receivers. 
Um, but C.D. Lamb, but Michael, since Michael Gallup is more so definitely number two, maybe even number one receiver, I wonder if he's going to essentially, and this is going to sound very weird and stupid, he's going to take Amari Cooper's routes. Now, because, and the only reason I bring that up is because James Washington is, or at least based on his tape and based on what he's put out there, he's more of a deep threat. Even in college, he was more of a deep threat. Now, um, I wish I could look up, I wish I could look up, um, his like combine numbers. Um, because he might have something that we, uh, we haven't had in a very long time. Let me see. Oklahoma state five eleven two thirteen. So he's a big dude. He ran a four five forty. He's not he only had 14 reps on the bench press. He only has a 34 inch jump vertical. Um and the three cone was a seven eleven. Eh. They're saying he has good quickness. This was this was his early draft things. Escapes with good initial quickness, vertical talent averaging over 20 yards a catch, awkward early steps into route development, into powerful driving steps, surprises cornerbacks with build up speed. So he has deep, so he's more of a long distance runner. Tracks ball like a center fielder racing for the running track at just speed to match ball flight. Uh, worked outside from the slot, flashes, run away speed, deep speed. So, so that's this is this is what I was going. This is what I was going to bring bring up. Um, his weaknesses: exposure to route tree is limited. Gives away comeback route more deliberately. <laughs> uh, topsy, he's top heavy. Okay. Um, not smooth, has issues finishing contested catches on the first and second level. Okay. So, like I said, he's more of a deep threat. Now, here's the beauty. Like I said, this is something the Cowboys haven't had in a very long time. He seems like he's going to be our Deshaun Jackson or Tyreek Hill kind of guy. Um, who were the who were the who were the wide receivers that destroyed our secondaries last year? Deshaun Jackson when we played the Rams, and or was it the Raiders? It was the Raiders. Excuse me, it was the Raiders. Deshaun Jackson when we played the Raiders and Tyreek Hill, but we kind of shut down Tyreek Hill, so. I'm trying to think who else we didn't really have that many deep. I mean, when we played Washington, uh, Terry McLaurin had that big play on, uh, and then and, and, I think that Raiders game. And this is, this is one of the problems with the front office is they don't look at the season I, to me. This is my opinion. They don't look at the season as a whole. They look at how did we get beat in this game? How did we get beat in this game? That Raiders game was one of the worst losses of the season. Granted, we only lost by three. It was one of the worst losses in the season because we practically gave that game to them on the defensive side with all those pass interference penalties. Um, But at the same time, that's when the offense – you know, everybody, everybody quotes Bill Parcells. You are, if you don't know who you are by Thanksgiving, you have a real big problem. That's not the exact quote. 
But he basically said in so many words, you should know who you are by Thanksgiving. If you don't know what type of team you are by Thanksgiving, something you got a problem. You should you should pretty much be on autopilot as a team by Thanksgiving. Because that's that's week 11, 12. So you should know who you are. And if you if you really look at it, the Raiders game is a culmination of exactly who the Dallas Cowboys were at by the end of the season. Cause the Raiders were they weren't a good team, but they weren't a bad team. And we played them as such. We we had good moments like we were facing bad teams, but we had bad moments like we were facing a good team. And ultimately they made they made more plays than we did. So that's that's James Washington. So back to my early theory. I know I'm all over the place. Y'all forgive me. So James Washington is going to be a deep threat. He is going to, and look for, they're going to go early to him. Look for, look for us as the Dallas Cowboys. Look for Dak Prescott to challenge defenses. With a deep threat. The Cowboys hadn't had a deep threat. Maybe that's what they saw on film. One of the biggest things we could not do this season was figure out how to beat freaking cover two. Why couldn't we beat cover two? We didn't have any speed on the outside. We didn't have somebody who could challenge that back end of the secondary. So a lot of so my guess is a lot of the defenses compressed. They said to themselves, the Dallas Cowboys like to hit the middle of the field and they like their underneath routes. And basically, how many, I mean, how many deep balls did Dak throw this season that were completed? We it was a few, but it was a lot of shallow to intermediate stuff. Um, and the Cowboys, I mean, like I said before, this is something we haven't had in a very long time. James Washington is going to be a deep, deep, deep threat. Now, the other question, if you want to go there, is Dak Prescott going to have enough arm to get the ball to him? But clearly, this is something we've been missing. I don't even remember who the last. Now, I know what y'all, some of y'all are saying. Well, Michael Gallup was our deep threat. How many contested catches did Michael Gallup, Michael Gallup catch as a deep threat? A lot. We need somebody like Tyreek Hill, who is 5, 10 yards ahead of his guy. And Dak can just lay it up there and let him get it. We hadn't had that in a long time. And maybe, maybe, sidebar, that is why we always got beat on defense with the deep ball. Because our deep during practice, our defense isn't aware. They're, they haven't been going up against guys who are who have speed like that. James Washington, he has good, they, like they said, he has good quickness off the line of scrimmage. And um, he has good quickness off the line of scrimmage. And he can build speed on defense. So that's what that's what we're hoping. That's what we're hoping to get. And that's what I hope we do get um, in that signing. So let's go over some of the other stuff that uh, I didn't cover last week. Um I told y'all in my free agency um, outlook video, we needed to sign three people. Three people had to get signed. And that was Randy Gregory, Brian Anger, and Javon Curse. Two of those, we we made it happen. I'm not going to go into Randy Gregory anymore. What was last? So, so, okay. So, 
a lot of these have a lot of these are old, like Doris Armstrong, Nora Brown, Michael Gallup, Malik Hooker. Um, but the good thing is Brian Anger, we got Brian Anger. Um, I know some of Cowboy fans are like, we signed Brian Anger to a three million dollar contract. Yeah, he was that important. He was that important. Like defensive, like, do y'all not realize? And I know I think I said this in my last video. Do y'all not realize that we were not expecting our defense to be good this year? We were expecting it to be, we were hoping, we were hoping for it to just be decent. We were not expecting this defense to be as good as it was this season. And that's the truth. So... We, we didn't expect too much out of Brian Anger, and we didn't expect too much from this defense. Do you know our season would have been 20 times more atrocious if we had um, – do you know the Eagles probably would have won the division if our defense wasn't good? So so let keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. So good pick, good, good re-signings. I don't see anything else um, that that really happened. Oh, we signed Carlos Watkins, and if you, if if I think if I I truly believe in my last not in the last video, but in the free agency outlook video, I said Carlos Watkins. If we can sign him for cheap, he'll be a good guy to bring back. And we also signed. Luke Gifford last week. Um, and I told y'all that I, I like him. I really do like him. Now, we only signed him to a one-year contract. So, this is kind of a make it or break it kind of season for him. Um, but And then also, they're going to they're gonna get a linebacker in the draft. They're going to get a linebacker in the draft. So, good set, way because he's pretty much the last one. Um. Nobody else is gone anywhere other than Connor Williams and Cedric Wilson. Everybody's pretty much either in limbo or they re-signed with the Cowboys. So, but like I said, good segue into the NFL draft. So, for those of y'all that have been hiding under the rock, um, number one priority, left guard. Second priority, wide receiver. Third priority, Defense. I'm gonna just say defense. Um, the question is: Is Dan Quinn? Are we going to actually invest in a real nose tackle? I don't know. We definitely need a linebacker. We can never have too many corners. Um. You can never have too many corners. And yeah, you can never have too many corners. <laughs> it's a passing league. You can never have too many corners. Um let me see. I'm trying to uh let's see. The Dallas Cowboys have one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. We have nine picks. Four whole picks in the fifth round. Um, four picks in the fifth round. Two of those being compens compens uh, compensatory picks. We don't have a seventh round pick, which is a good thing. That means I don't have to watch. <laughs> uh, but hands down, hands down, um, this team needs left guard, wide receiver, they're probably in, in defense. Um, they, I think we'll double dip at offensive linemen. I think we'll double dip at – no, I take that back. The only, the only spot I think we might double dip on is offensive linemen. I think we're I think they and and the Cowboys, the good thing about the Cowboys, they're gonna draft best player available. They're gonna draft the best player available. So don't get mad if 
they draft a wide receiver in the first round. Because it's quite possible a guy like Traylon Burks or, or Chris Olave might drop to us. There are some defensive ends that could drop to us too. But it's all depend it's all dependent on it's all dependent on who um uh, who's you know who's available. So it's quite possible to get a defensive end in the first round. But don't get your hopes up. The first round pick is either going to be a left guard, a wide receiver, or a defensive end. And it's not even close. Almost knocked my light down. It's not even close. Get your mind right. That's that's what it's going to be. All right. Now, into another theory. I don't, I don't have much time. The Cowboys and free agency. And the offseason in general. What we have to understand as Cowboy fans, the Cowboys want to build through the draft. So what they try to do is sign their own, let guys explore free agency. Let them explore free agency. Only sign players on a need-be basis. We need a defensive end because we lost one. We needed a wide receiver because we lost one. It adds up. But ultimately, the Cowboys are looking to get those compensatory picks to boost their draft stocks. Those compensatory picks help to move up in the draft. This philosophy, there might be there might be another team that does it. This team has proven that they care more about, and I think it's right, but it's wrong at the same time, if that makes sense. They care more about keeping the team young, which I agree with. Let's build the team through through the draft. Um, because one of the things that has killed this team in the past has been depth. They're trying to get guys who I think the Cowboys are doing way too much to making sure we have a team to put out on the field and not allowing and not enough emphasis on making sure that this team is doesn't have the players that are transcendent. Who's the most trans? Let's let's think about this. Who's the most transcendent player on this team right now? Micah Parsons. <laughs> Crickets. Maybe Brian Anger. Maybe Brian Anger. We got a lot of maybes. No, I'll take that back. We got a lot of maybes. You know, I'll put Tank in there. I'll put Tank Lawrence in there. We got Micah and Tank. Our maybes, here are our maybes. Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott, CeeDee Lamb, Michael Gallup, Trayvon Diggs, um, uh, J. Ron Curse. Those are our maybes. Those are our maybes. The rest are NFL starters. And I'm not knocking them. They have one of 32 jobs that you can get. They have one. This is a hard game. 
this is hard. These guys have worked their behinds off, trained their behinds off to get to the NFL. So I'm not going to take that away, but they're just NFL starters, though. They're not transcendent players. Why? I know what y'all are thinking. Why isn't Trayvon Diggs a transcendent player? Trayvon Diggs has proven he has great hands and great anticipation. He's not a, he has not shown that he's a shut down corner. Now, I will say this. The man showed up and showed out against, um, what's my man name? Terry McLaurin. That first game of the season, that first game against Washington, Trey, uh, Terry McLaurin had zero. I think he was only thrown to maybe two or three times, but he had zero across the board. He shut him down, but he's not shutting everybody now for whatever reason. And maybe it might be, maybe that's Dan Quinn's coaching. Dan Quinn's probably saying to himself, we cannot. He's probably telling Trayvon, I like, and this is, and this is coaching. This is beautiful coaching. He's telling Trayvon, listen, you can, you can jump routes on this guy. He's a lazy route runner. So we can jump routes on him. We, he might beat us a little bit, but we, we should get some possessions out of him. And then he went looked at a Terry McLaurin and said, he will destroy you if you let him. Do not jump any routes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he probably told him, like, Terry McLaurin is a problem. We can't jump any routes with him. And therefore, he just played cornerback. Because you can't, it takes a special guy. Dion was a special guy. He was able to cover and know this is my chance to, to get something out. You know what I mean? Not every cornerback is Deion Sanders. And we have to, I, I think what we're doing as fans, we're learning, especially Cowboy fans. <sighs> There's three times, especially Cowboy fans. We have learned th- very quickly In fact, not everybody is Larry Allen. We have learned not everybody is Charles Haley. We have learned that not everybody is Deion Sanders. Those were some one-in-a-lifetime kind of guys. In fact, you can almost say, you want to know who Larry Allen was? He was, Larry Allen was the yin to Aaron Donald's yang. Larry Allen was Aaron Donald before Aaron Donald, except on the offensive side of football. That's who he was. That's who he was. I'm proud of myself for that one. That's a great comparison. Larry Allen was Aaron Donald before Aaron Donald on the offensive side of football, at least. That's who Larry Allen was. These guys are on a tier. Y'all can't see my hand because you can't find that tier. It's somewhere up in the heavens where it's only a few spots. It's only a few places for a few guys. But, you know, the funny thing is Tom Brady, what he athletically, he's not on that tier, but because he's won so much, we're going to put, we put him up there. But Tom Brady's not that great of a football player. He just, you know, he's just he just wins all the freaking time. He's cerebrally, cerebrally, if that's even a word, cerebrally, he's probably the greatest football player ever. But athletically, he's he's not. He's average. He's average to above. I give him above average. I give him above average. Um. So Cowboy fans understand. This is the way that the Dallas Cowboys have decided to run their team. The days of signing a Dion and a Charles Haley 
No, I think those days are over. The the you these guys would have to be so first of all, we would have to have the cap space. But these guys would have to be so transcendent of players. You know what I mean? And not to mention the whole Z. Like, like I know I said that the Dallas Cowboys suck at reevaluating their team. Because there is no way. Don't get me wrong. I understand what Zeke did and what he was doing for us. But there's no way in hell I would have gave him that money. He would have had to hold out. I would have been like, I guess we're drafting a running back in the, in the third round. I would have drafted two running backs in the third round that year. I would have. I'm not, I'm not. I would have looked Zeke in the face like, bro, I love you. But I'm not paying you right now. At least come to us at the end of your rookie year. Negro, you got two whole years left on your contract. Like, I would have never did that. I would have never did that. I would have never did that. But he did it. But shh, listen, man, until next time, that's my time. And until next time, um, please like, subscribe, share, support Never Alone. I thank you all very much. It's your boy, Billy Mac, and I'll holler at you next time. Peace. Got to do how to do a peace sign just then. I holler.